Let us now understand factoring strategies for difference of squares. With eight examples, I am going to explain you the basic concept and then solve all these questions. That will help you to understand completely how do we factor difference of squares. Now, in case you want to learn from me, you can always join my classes by sending an email on the address given. Let us now continue with the solution of these questions. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we'll understand factoring strategies for difference of squares. Here are eight examples for you. You can also pause the video and answer these questions. We'll begin with the expansion of what is x plus y times x minus y. That really helps you to answer the question. Perfect. So we have a problem set with concepts and extended examples. And after understanding what is the expansion of x plus y times x minus y, you will understand how do we factor them. So let's begin by answering our question, and that is, what is x plus y into x minus y? So let's try to figure this out. So we have x plus y times x minus y. So if you expand it, applying the distributive properties, that is, multiplying x with x and with minus y, you get x squared minus xy. And then multiplying y with x and then with minus y, you get plus yx, which I can write as xy. It is a good practice. When you write expressions, alphabetical order for variables help you to combine them. And then we have minus y squared. Now, combining these, you can see very easily that minus xy and plus xy cancel. And therefore, what do we get? We get the expression as equal to x squared minus y squared. Now, that means that x squared minus y squared can be factored as x plus y times x minus y. So, that is the background on this particular topic. So, let's get back to our question, which is a problem set with concepts and extended examples factor fully, eight of them. We just discovered that what is x plus y times x minus y. So, difference of squares is the product of sum and differences. So, so we just figured out that x plus y, which is the sum of two variables x and y, product with the difference, which is x minus y, is equal to x squared minus y squared. So now factoring really means the reverse process. We are given the terms, which are kind of x squared minus y squared. We need to write in the factored form x plus y times x minus y. Perfect. So that is the concept. So now let's begin answering the questions. So, the very first one is x squared minus 1, right? So, we understand that x plus y times x minus y is equal to x squared minus y squared. And therefore, we have x squared minus. Think like this. So, we have two terms. y in this case is 1. And we could therefore write this as x plus 1 times x minus 1. Is that clear to you? That is how we factor. Perfect. The next one is 4x square minus 9. You can write 4x square as 2x whole square, correct? And 9 is 3 square. So again, we have difference of squares. And to factor, 
what we need to do is write their sum. Sum will be 2x plus 3 times their product, which is 2x minus 3. You get it. So, that is how you factor. So, with these two basic examples, the concept is clear, and that is this relation x square minus y square is equivalent to the product of x plus y and x minus y. And that is what we call factoring. Now, let's continue with the next example. I would like you to pause the video at this stage, answer, and then look into my suggestions. So, here we have 3x square minus 12y square. But 3 is not a perfect square. So, in this particular case, we could actually factor out 3, right? So, this is a combination where we'll do group factor first. And then we will do difference of squares. Clear? So here, let me rewrite this as 3 times x squared minus 12 divided by 3 is 4, 4y squared. Correct? So this could be written as 3 times x squared minus 4y means 2y and whole square. That is 4y square. Now, I could factor this as sum and product, right? So, 3 times x plus 2y times x minus 2y. Is this clear to you? So, we first did group factoring and then the difference of squares. The next example is for you to practice 18a square minus 50. So, we'll follow the same strategy. We know 18 is not a perfect square, but 9 is. 50 is not a perfect square, but 25 is. So, taking 2 common, right, in this particular case, you could use square brackets. Also, we get 9a square minus 25. And that gives me 2, and within brackets, 3a whole square minus 5 squared. Now, that is difference of squares, which could now be written as 2 times 3a plus 5 times 3a minus 5. Is that clear to you? Perfect. So, you see, sometimes we have questions involving two combinations of factoring. One, you learn group factoring and then the difference of squares. Let's move on. Now, this is kind of extended with slightly more difficult questions for you. Now, this is 3 times x minus 1 whole square minus 27. I'd like you to pause the video and answer this question. Well, how am I going to factor? Can I factor out 3 from both first and second term? Yes, I can. So, why not? So, from the first term, we are left with x minus 1 whole square, and in the next term, 27 divided by 3 is 9. And 9, you know, is 3 square, right? So, we could write this as 3 times x minus 1 whole square minus 3 square. So, that is difference of squares within the square brackets. So, we can now write this as sum and difference product. So, sum of x minus 1 and 3 times x minus 1 minus 3, right? Sum and difference. Now, we can simplify this. We get minus 1 plus 3 as plus 2, minus 1 minus 3 as minus 4. So, I'll write down x minus 4. And that becomes the factored form 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 4. Do you understand how we got this particular result, right? So, basically, we did sum and product and then we expanded. Perfect. So, we have our term 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 4. I'd like you to attempt the next question 
which is very interesting. We need to factor x to the power of 4 minus 1. Well, x to the power of 4 means x squared whole square. Right? This is how you see power of 4. And 1 we are looking at as the square of 1 itself. So, we could use difference of squares. And what we get here is the term x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 1. Now, you notice that x squared minus 1 can be further factored. So, we will continue factoring. x squared plus 1 cannot be factored in the domain of real numbers, but x squared minus 1 can be. You could write this as sum and product of x plus 1. You see that, just as we did in question number 1. So, that is what we mean when we say factor fully. So that is kind of important. You should not leave at this stage. You need to continue till the end. So, that is the finally fully factored form of the given expression. I hope this point is clear. Last two examples for you. So, these two examples are kind of test questions and I hope by now you have practiced a bit. Now, we have x to the power of 8 minus 256. Now, what is 256? Can you write this as a power of 2? Yes, I think you can. 2 to the power of 8, right? Now, we could factor this as, see, x to the power of 8 will be 4 squared. So, I could write this as x to the power of 4 plus 2 to the power of 4 times x to the power of 4 minus 2 to the power of 4. Is that clear to you? So, I am not giving you all the steps as we did initially. As you learn this process, you can do just as I am doing here, right? Now, sum of even numbers, squares cannot be factored. But the difference can be, right? So, I will retain the first term as it is. However, I can expand the second term factor. Rather, we get x squared plus 2 square times x square minus 2 square, right? And then we'll continue factoring. So that is what we mean by factor fully perfect. 2 square. So I could write 4 also, right? Let me write 4 this time, 2 square. And here we could further factor as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Finally, I'll write this as x to the power of 4 plus 2 to the power of 4 is basically how much? 64, right? And we have x squared plus 4 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. So, that is the fully factored form of the given expression. It is a very important test question. Now, the last question for you is x minus y whole square minus x plus y whole square. So, these are squares, right? Difference of squares. So, I could factor this as sum and product. So, the first one is x minus y plus x plus y. That becomes the sum. And the second term will be difference, which is x plus y minus, let me write here, x minus y. Correct? So, that becomes sum and difference. Let's simplify x plus x is 2x, right? And minus y plus y is 0. So, we get 2x here. And the other term, x and minus x cancel, but y becomes 2y, correct? So, what we get here is 4 times x, y. Do you see that? So, the difference of x minus y whole square minus x plus y whole square is 4xy. So, I hope with this, the concepts of factoring are absolutely clear. So, we also understood fully factored means what? Fully factored, as we saw in these examples, that we have to continue till all the terms cannot be factored. Perfect. So, with that, we come to an end. Watch our series on how do we factor different types of polynomials.
So this one was dealing with difference of squares. We'll take up examples also based on this application. I hope you understand and appreciate what we have done. Feel free to write your comments and views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best. Thank you.